It's Miss Alex, and this week we're talking about birds. So this, again, is one of our big books by National Geographic Kids, and it's The Little Kid's First Big Book of Birds by Catherine D. Hughes. Chapter 1. Bird Basics. This is a blue and yellow macaw. About 10,000 different species or kinds of birds fly, swim, and walk around on planet Earth. In this chapter, discover what makes an animal a bird. Feathers. All birds have feathers. Birds are animals. Other kinds of animals include mammals, insects, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and more. Let's take a look at what makes an animal a bird. No other kind of animal has feathers, so any animal with feathers is a bird. Bird feathers come in many shapes, sizes, and colors. They help birds fly, stay warm, and keep dry. Different kinds of birds have different kinds of feathers. The way the feathers work depends on what the bird needs them to do. All birds have beaks. You can tell a lot about a bird, what a bird eats by looking at its beak. Beaks are also called bills. Here are a few examples of the many kind of beaks birds have. You'll discover even more as you read through this book. So this one up here in the top corner says, a black skimmer uses its longer lower bill to skim food into its mouth as it flies just above the surface of the water. Down here, a long skinny beak helps the collared sunbird reach into flowers to sip nectar, nectar a sweet juice inside. This yellow and black spotted one is a great spotted woodpecker that pecks wood to find insects and has a strong pointed beak. Bald eagles have a sharp hooked beak that helps rip pieces of meat from the animals that they eat. Eggs and chicks. All birds hatch from eggs. Many kinds of birds are not able to do much of anything when they hatch from their eggs. They do not have many feathers. They need their parents to keep them warm, feed them, and protect them. This kind of helpless chick is called altricial. You guys say altricial? It's a kind of a hard word. So this is a black-naped monarch over here that's feeding its baby. Other kinds of birds are more independent when they hatch. They have feathers and can walk around. Some can even swim. These kind of chicks are called precocial. So precocial means that they get all their feathers when they're born and that they can even swim possibly and they can walk around. Altricial means that they cannot. So this is a mute swan that's swimming with, with its babies. Eventually, a young bird fledges what it, which is when it can survive outside the nest. So fledges means it can survive outside the nest. Once a fledgling can leave the nest, it often still needs help from its parents, but soon it will be on its own. This is a snowy owl, and it's a fledgling, which means it's going to leave the nest, but still has help from its parents. All birds have wings, and most birds can fly. This is a wandering albatross that you see with its wings spread wide. You probably see a lot of flying birds every time you go outside or look out the window. Flying birds use their wings to get from one place to another. Some birds are super flyers. One extraordinary flying bird is the wandering albatross, like we just talked about, the one that has its wings sprayed out. Its wingspan, measuring from wingtip to wingtip, is a little more than 11 feet. Why don't you measure that out at home with mommy and daddy? 11 feet and see how wide those wings are. They might be taller than you. Wow, that means a wandering albatross could stretch its wings from one end of a small car to the other. Hmm. Could try that too. This albatross has the longest wingspan of any bird. It spends most of its life flying over the ocean. So this little bird at the bottom is the Arctic Tern and it flies 44,000 miles every year. Can you picture 44,000 cubes? That's how much it flies every year, that many miles. The bar-tailed godwit can fly from Alaska and the United States all the way to New Zealand without stopping. So if you have a map around, maybe you guys can look at that. All the way from Alaska to New Zealand. The chimney swift can sleep while it's flying. So can you imagine that? 
you could just be dreaming and sleeping and also flying across the country. Bird watching. Lots of people enjoy watching birds. I know we have a few friends that do. They are called birders and their hobby is called birding. Binoculars help a birder see birds by making them look a lot closer than they are. A bird that looks like this without binoculars. So this tiny bird over here, you're not looking at it with binoculars, but if you look at it through binoculars, you'll see this image that's bigger over on the other side. When you can look at birds up close, here are some things you'll be able to see. You'll be able to see their head, their beak, their chin and throat, their neck, chest, wings, belly, foot, leg, and tail. Birds' feet can tell you a lot about how they live. Ducks and other swimmers have webbed feet. Ostriches and other birds that do not fly have strong toes and claws for running and walking. Birds that spend a lot of time in trees have feet that can hold on to branches. Birds that hunt have big claws called talons that they use to grab animals they hunt. Chapter two, flyers, runners, and swimmers. These are emperor penguin chicks that we see above us. Most birds fly, but some cannot. Some birds are expert swimmers and divers. In this chapter, you will read about how different birds get around. This is a rainbow lorikeet. Big groups of these brightly colored birds fly together. Lorikeets have tongues with brush-like tips that help them gather nectar and pollen from flowers. So they gather nectar, pollen, fruits, seeds, and insects to eat. The birds often travel together in groups called flocks. All these lorikeets together can make a lot of noise. They shriek, squawk, chatter, and twitter. When the birds gather in trees to eat, they blend in with the leaves and flowers around them. Their bright colors help them hide in plain sight. They are a type of parrot, and there are 350 kinds of parrots. Now, as you can see in this picture, they're about as big as your hand, and they lay about two to three eggs at a time when they do have eggs, and those babies are gonna come out altricial, which means they're not gonna have feathers and they're not gonna be able to take care of themselves and walk around. And they fledge about eight weeks later, so they'll leave the nest about eight weeks later. This is a peregrine falcon. This bird is the fastest moving animal in the world. Peregrine falcons are hunting birds. As they soar through the air, peregrines hunt for smaller birds to eat. When the bird spots its prey, such as a pigeon or a duck, it quickly zooms down to catch it. Now, these are things that are flying. So he's catching things mid-air. This female peregrine falcon is bigger than males. A peregrine falcon's fast dive down through the air is called a stoop. Can you say a stoop? The hunter can reach a speed of up to 155 miles an hour. So about 100 square and 50 10 bars and five unit beads an hour in its stoop. That's as fast as a high speed train. A peregrine's nest is a simple scraped away spot on a cliff or building. Sometimes they make a nest on the ground or in a tree or hollow. They live in cities and countryside, often perching on high buildings or trees like we just talked about on every continent except Antarctica. They mainly eat other birds but they also eat some other animals like bats, rabbits, rodents, and sometimes insects, reptiles, and fish. They lay about three to four eggs at a time, and their babies look like they're altricial, which means that they're born without feathers, and they ha can't care for themselves. And the, they fledge or they leave the nest at about 35 to 42 days. Can you imagine leaving your mommy and daddy after 42 days? The ruby-throated hummingbird. This tiny bird is an expert flyer. The hummingbirds can fly backward and forward and they can hover or stay in one place in the air, just like a dragonfly. This amazing flying bird helps the other birds. This amazing flying helps the birds get to flowers so they can drink nectar, a sugary sweet liquid inside of the flowers. 
One hummingbird might visit up to 2,000 flowers or 2,000 cubes each day of flowers to drink nectar. When it gets to a flower, which is often red or orange, the bird sticks its long beak inside and then it uses its long tongue to reach the nectar. This species of hummingbird is the only one that nests in the eastern United States and there are many species of hummingbirds um, that are different from this one, but this is the ruby-throated hummingbird and why do you think that? Can you see this picture over here with the ruby-colored throat? Now, we didn't mention that the ruby-throated hummingbird can flap its wings 53 times in one second. How many times can you flap your wings in one minute? Now, if you take that number, imagine that a hummingbird just did 53 flaps in a second. So time a second and see how many flaps that you can do. They live in woodlands, gardens, orchards, and fields in eastern North America, winters in dry open areas in most of Central America. So they, they migrate. They eat mostly flower nectar and also tiny insects and spiders, and they usually lay two eggs at a time. Their babies are altricial, and they fledge at about 20 days, and they're smaller than your hand. There are more than 350 different species of hummingbirds around the world. Here are just a few. The booted racket tail, the rufous hummingbird, the violet subruing, the long-tailed sylph, the black-throated mango, the tufted coquette, rufous-tailed hummingbird, and the violet-tailed sylph. The ostrich is the biggest bird in the world and cannot fly. Male ostriches make a loud booming sound to warn other ostriches of danger. Ostriches are tall and weigh a lot. They can fly, but they can run faster than they cannot fly, but they can run faster than any other kind of bird. 44 miles an hour. Have you ever been in the car at 44 miles an hour? Imagine a big ostrich running along next to you. An ostrich has two toes, only two. One is tough and strong with a long claw. It helps the ostrich grip the ground to run fast. An ostrich has such a strong kick that it could kill a lion. See, that's why lions don't hunt ostriches, because it's too hard, it's too dangerous. They live in dry, open areas and woodland in much of Africa. They eat grass, seeds, leaves, flowers, fruits, and roots. They lay up to 11 eggs at a time. And their babies are precocial, which means they, they are born with wings and they're ready to start walking around. They'll leave the nest at about three days old and fledge at about four months later. So as you can see, an ostrich is about twice as tall as you guys. Ostriches have the largest eyes of any land animal. One ostrich eyeball is almost as big as a baseball. If you guys have a baseball, can you go look at it right now and hold it in your hand and imagine that that is a giant ostrich eye. That's huge. About 24 chicken eggs will fit inside one ostrich egg. That's about two dozen eggs. So two dozen eggs, that's a lot. Could you imagine having an egg that fits two dozen other chicken eggs inside of it? An ostrich nest is a scraped area on the ground. So as you can see, there's not a lot of leaves or foliage around it like other birds. He doesn't collect anything. But there's just kind of like a dirt, um, a little kind of divot in the dirt. The ostriches live in flocks and share their nests. And one nest can have as many as 60 eggs in it. So they lay 11 eggs, but they share a nest. So they'll have 60 eggs inside one nest. Ostriches are one of a group of similar birds called ratites. Here are the other kind of ratites. So there's the second heaviest bird in the world, and this is the southern cassowary. And we've talked about this when we talked about Australia. They live in New Guinea as well and on one island in Indonesia. There are two other species of cassowaries. The emu, 
is the largest bird in Australia, and the greater ray is the largest bird in North and South America. There are two species of rays. And the kiwis, a small little one up here at the top, are found only in New Zealand, and there are five species of kiwis. And they kind of look more like a marsupial than a bird. Now, let's see what's on the next page. A royal penguin. Penguins cannot fly, but they are powerful swimmers. A royal penguin colony can have as many as 500,000 birds. 500,000 cubes. Can you imagine? Colonies include rockhopper penguins, which are a close relative. Penguins' wings are flippers that the birds use to swim. They flap them underwater as if they are flying. Royal penguins live in the ocean, and they come ashore only to raise their chicks. They live in the southern Pacific Ocean and nest mainly on Macquarie Island between New Zealand and Antarctica. They eat fish, squid, and krill, which are small shrimp-like creatures. They lay about two eggs at a time, but usually only the second one is incubated, which means they will only probably raise one baby. Their babies are altricial, which means that they don't have feathers when they're born, and that's why they have to keep them super warm. And they'll fledge it about 70 days later. Now, as you can see, a penguin is about half as tall as you guys, so he'll probably reach your waist. A royal penguin colony can have as many as 500,000 birds. So like we said, that's 500,000 cubes. So imagine all those birds, and they have nests on the ground. So all those nests are on the ground around you. It makes a simple nest of stones and grass. So... This could take up a whole side of a beach, couldn't it? Like, that's a lot of nests. The Atlantic Puffin. We've talked about this one. The Puffin's colorful beak reminds people of clowns, and the Puffins are nicknamed the Clowns of the Sea. The birds spend most of their lives at sea, and they are excellent swimmers and divers, but they can fly too. Puffins dive and swim underwater to catch fish and other sea creatures. They use their wings to fly through the water. They steer with their webbed feet. A flying puffin slaps its wings super fast, about 400 times in one minute. So remember when you flapped your wing for a whole minute just to see how fast you could do it like the hummingbird? Well, the Atlantic puffin can do 400 times in a minute, so 400 cubes worth of flaps in one minute. They live in North Atlantic Ocean and its islands and coasts. They eat small fish, including herring and sand eels. They'll only lay one egg at a time, and they're altricial, which means they don't have wings when they're born. And they'll fledge after six weeks. And it looks like they're about bigger than your hand, maybe as big as your head. Another nickname for the bird is the sea parrot. That is because its beak looks a lot like a parrot's beak. A puffin's beak can open wide to carry many fish at once. It eats what it catches or takes the food back to its nest to feed its chicks. One puffin can carry 62 sand eels, a kind of fish in its beak, to, at once. So that's about six 10 bars and two unit beans. That's a lot. Puffins live at sea except for the time they have chicks. They use their strong beaks to dig burrows in the ground and puffins make a nest inside the burrow. They use soft things such as feathers and grass to make a comfortable nest for their chicks. And both parents take care of their chick. They take turns heading out to sea to find food. Puffins gather in groups called colonies. So when we're in a group, so when people are in a group, they're called a crowd of people. But when they're in a group, it's called a colony. So we're going to end by playing a game. All of these birds have different traits, and they all can either fly, swim, or not fly. So look at the pictures, maybe with mommy and daddy, and see if you can tell or if you can remember which birds can fly or not fly and which birds can swim. So we have the greater ray that we talked about. We have the ruby-throated hummingbird, the Atlantic puffin, the ostrich, the rainbow lorikeet, the southern cassowary, the royal penguin, and the peregrine falcon. And the answers are right here at the bottom. 
So I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I hope that you guys are having fun learning about birds.